How's it going everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be going over my Severin Films collection. Um, as far as a company, man, they're one of the best. Great guys. Every time I go to a horror convention, I always got to stop by the Severin Films uh, booth. I'm going to keep my opinions very honest, okay? There's a lot of their movies that I do love and also some that I do not. And then I'm going to address this question already. Why keep a movie if it's bad? Because I... I still appreciate it you know horror as a whole um i appreciate the art of it so even if i didn't personally like it i still kind of like to own it you know kind of think of my collection as a library um so yeah without further ado guys let's get into it so right here we have the uh severn collection i moved things around recently so now it's under the uh arrow there all right first up here we've got an Angel for Satan. This is a pretty good gothic movie. Um, a little slow, if I'm being honest. Not the biggest fan of this one. Barbara Steelen is in that, though. That's really cool. We have Ballad and Blood. This is directed by Ruggiero Diodato, who, of course, did Cannibal Holocaust. This is probably one of the worst movies <laughs> in my collection. Um, this was so bad. It's terrible. The Beast Must Die. This is probably one of my least favorite Amicus films. I really did like the whole hokey gimmick of... Uh, the can you guess who the werewolf is though that was kind of fun blood on satan's claw this is a good folk movie honestly i expected uh, a little bit more of that one i was a little bit let down bloody pit of horror this was the surprise pick for me i loved this movie it's about like a group of people that go into this castle and they go to take pictures like scantily clad pictures or whatever imagine like if x the movie from this year uh, with mia goth imagine if x took place in the 70s in a gothic castle and they all get picked off one by one by this guy that's actually uh mariska hargate's dad mickey burial ground this is an insane zombie movie this is probably in top five zombie films for me um that son character is just the most unhinged character in all of horror i'm gonna stand by that Buried Alive, also known as Beyond the Darkness. This is a pretty good movie. There's going to be a lot of um, video nasties in here too as well. So this is the first of many. Here's another one actually. Cannibal Man. I heard a lot of bad things about this one. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's like it's Spanish. Uh, so it is Spanish speaking, but a lot of fun. There's some really good kill scenes in there too. Obviously that one was classic. Castle of the Creeping Flesh. This is another gothic movie. Um from either the late 60s or early 70s i can't remember but this one was uh, pretty good too i really liked the uh, there's like surgery scenes there's a lot in this movie and i and i swear it's real it looks very real the changeling this is a pretty good ghost movie is what they'll call it um really cool slip cover really nice and shiny i got mine creased up pretty good there um i wasn't the biggest fan of this when i watched it. i was a little bit bored but they did announce the 4K. I probably won't be picking that up, but that definitely renews my interest in that, and I might watch that again. This one has, um, think, uh, like, nudity all over it, so I don't want to show that. Uh, that's Bloody Moon. Pretty good slasher movie, actually. Really good. Day of the Animals. This is a great killer animal movie. If you're looking for a killer animal movie, check out Day of the Animals. I had a lot of fun with that one. Christopher George and Linda Day George. Death Warmed Up. This is a film from New Zealand, I believe. I could not get into this one. Could not get into it. I don't think I've heard a single good thing about that one, actually. Delirium. This is kind of right in the middle of the road, if I'm being honest with you. Um, not doesn't not much really stands out, and to be honest, I watched this probably only a handful of months ago and can't remember too much about it, so that kind of speaks for its merit. Don't go in the house. This film is awesome. This movie is so good. I always thought that the way they portrayed like burn victims and dead bodies in this movie are just about as good as you'll find in the 80s. The special effects is fantastic. It's very haunting. Very, very creepy. That one creeped me out. We've got Eaten Alive from Umberto Lenzi. This stars Robert Kerman, who is also in Cannibal Holocaust. Um, his character in this is insane. Like he's just going around and he's like the he almost takes on the typical uh like action star character and it, it's just so over the top it's 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 insane uh mardi gras massacre this movie was a big letdown for me as well um very very boring i think there's only like three deaths in this movie 
Um, not that that makes a movie boring, but they're all kind of the same, and it's just, it's aimless, and I don't know, that just one, that one wasn't for me. Grizzly, probably my favorite killer bear movie. Awesome movie. As, as, I'm saying that as if it's like a widely touted genre of films. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, Grizzly's a lot of fun. Some good death scenes in that, actually. This is Horrors of Spar uh, Spider Island, excuse me. This is a black and white German film. This one was a lot of fun, too. I had a good time with this one. House on the Edge of the Park. Now, this is a movie I was not expecting to be what it is. Um, yeah, not really what I expected, but it was all right nonetheless, though. Probably right in the middle of the road, in my opinion. Up next, uh, Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile 2. You know what you're getting with these, just cheap crocodile movies. Uh, this one also has some nudity on the front, so I'll just show the back. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, actually, there we go. Um, yep, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, that movie is awful. I, <laughs> I hated that movie, man, it was not my cup of tea. Now, Midnight is my cup of tea, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I know John Rousseau, uh, I believe, directed this one, uh, so really good movie, had a good time with that one. Night of the Demon, another fantastic movie. This is the best Sasquatch film I've ever seen. Ever. Which is surprising that they haven't really topped this yet. Because, I mean, I guess Sasquatch isn't really necessarily in right now. But, uh, yeah. You see a dude's dick get ripped off in that. That's pretty interesting. Patrick Still Lives, another one that surprised me. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna edit that out. Whatever. But, uh, yeah, Patrick Still Lives is fantastic. I love that movie. And I'm going to be going over the first film in that. Um, not really franchise. There's two films. But I liked the sequel more. It's a very slashery. And the kills are insane. Really, really good. Patrick Still Lives is a good one. We've got Plague Town here. This one is another one that's kind of surprised me. It's, it's really cheap feeling. But it's really good. And very competent on, uh, like, scares and, like... A little bit of tension in that. Pretty creepy movie. Primitives, another really good cannibal movie. I didn't really hit a cannibal streak until recently. I used to, I don't know, it, I just really wasn't into him. But I kind of opened, because of course I saw Cannibal Holocaust. I was like, oh, yep, that's not really my thing. But I kind of recently branched out this year. And I'm, I'm really enjoying cannibal films now, actually. Because obviously with a lot of these movies, there's, you know, just the... Um, a lot of animal, like, real-life animal kill scenes and gore and stuff like that, and that's kind of brutal to watch, but, um, yeah, they're fun if you can <laughs> stomach those scenes. Retribution, this one's a lot of fun, too. There's a lot of downtime. It's super long for no reason, really, um, but there's a lot of insane deaths in this movie, like, absolutely batshit bonkers that you won't expect. Really fun. Siege, this is more so kind of like an action thriller, um, but I really enjoyed this one. A lot of fun. Next up is Skinner. This is kind of a neo-noir take on a slasher movie, kind of, but it is done in not as an exciting way as it sounds. I cannot get into Skinner, and I, I don't know why. I like Ted Raimi. I like Tracy Lords. I like slasher movies. Uh, but I don't know. It's just some, every time I watch, try, I've tried like three times now and I've watched it all the way through. I didn't fall asleep. So that's saying something, but I don't know. I just can't get into that one still. This is V. This is a Russian film from, I believe the sixties, um, maybe fifties. So it's all Russian speaking. Um, this is insane. If it, it, it's worth the watch just for the ending alone. Um, in terms of what they did and like the imagery and everything is terrifying and it's really impressive honestly for the time period I think they say that's Russia's first horror movie or something like that I don't know I heard that but next is Wax Mask now if you guys are familiar with like PBS basic television cable publications uh, from like the early 2000s late 90s such as like Wishbone this movie looks just like that shit. <laughs> like, watch this again, and look, under that kind of filter, it just looks cheap and uninteresting. Uh, but that doesn't really speak about the movie itself, just the way it looks. Wax Max is actually pretty okay. Um, 
It's not... I don't know if Dario Argento directed it. Yeah, no, he didn't. He just produced it, so that kind of makes sense. But, yeah. Wax masks, it, it's all right. It's right in the middle of the road for me. All right, so those are all the slipcover versions I have. And now we're going to go through all the non-slips here. We've got absurd. Now this is kind of I'm 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 still struggling to figure out what the meaning of this movie is in regards to its relation with uh, Anthropophagus, because I swear to God it's just a remake. But there's like subtle dif not subtle. There is differences, but it's the same thing. It's the same character. I don't know if it's a sequel or whatever. But uh, yeah, I love these films regardless. Though the um, George Eastman's character is just insane. And he did us some very depraved stuff, especially um, Anthropophagus. This is Enigma from Lucio Fulci, one of my lesser favorite Lucio Fulci films, if I'm going to be absolutely honest. All the Colors of the Dark. Now, this is a Giallo movie that everyone loves, and I love Edwig Finnick. I think that she's a fantastic actress. I think she's beautiful, but I don't know. I This one was a little slow for me, and I'm a massive Giallo fan, so may, maybe I need to rewatch that again. I'm that's the thing too is you know i always down to rewatch a movie i didn't like because a lot of the times my opinion has changed and now the screaming starts probably my favorite amicus film this movie is so good and i wasn't expecting anything from it um but i had an absolute blast with this movie this one's very very good now we've got anthropophagus anthropology goose as i call it um now this one is just insane all the gore scenes and everything is extremely like out there and obviously we all know that one scene it's a it's a it's an intense watch it's a lot of fun asylum this is a like a another amicus film it's a an, an anthology movie excuse me one of the better anthology films uh from kind of the 70s i guess uh let's see 72 yeah so it's a really early one a lot of fun with asylum especially that first um story with the body parts and the cooler and all wrapped up and how they move it's actually really impressive and a lot of fun to watch up next is the attic expeditions now i watched this and i'll be honest i don't know what the hell was going on the whole time i um i was kind of bored too and i mean look at this cast andrews jones from uh nightmare on Elm street part four seth green jeffrey combs ted Raimi. you know it's like how can you kind of lose with that combination and maybe it just wasn't my thing but uh yeah, Alice Cooper's in it for a little while, too. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't like that one. The Beast in Heat. Now, this film is very uh, out there. Kind of Nazi exploitation meets uh, ugh, sleaze. Ex like, imagine the sleaziest thing you've ever seen. Uh, and that's probably The Beast in Heat. This was definitely a video nasty uh no wonder why <laughs> black candles this movie is awful <laughs> i hated this movie and i was so excited um i picked up a lot of these during the like it, during a lot of the sales and the last sale that they had this was one of my pickups and it was one of the films i watched last because usually the way i watch movies is i will like take a pick up like all the films i picked up and i'd watch the one i'm least excited about first and then the one i'm most excited about last you know, I, I don't know. It's kind of like Thanksgiving where you eat the like green beans first because you want them least. And then, you know, building up anticipation, I suppose. Anyways, Black Candles. This one was one of the ones I saved to watch near the end uh, because I thought it looked awesome. But oh my God, this movie bored me to tears. I was so bored watching Black Candles. The Black Cat. This is a actually really fun, really, really fun um, Edgar Allan Poe adaptation. But it... Uh, pretty much has nothing to do with it at all and it's really really cool the way they make it work because it's almost like kind of meta a little bit and i know that term is played out and used but this one's a lot of fun actually i really enjoyed that all right now we've got bloody birthday uh, a lot of people know about this movie you know your standard kind of 1981 kid slasher movie i'm not the biggest fan of this one just because i don't like kid movies like killer kid movies they just piss me off and i i don't know i, I just i don't know i just i don't know i just get so aggravated with like kids acting like little shitheads and then whenever like someone finds out they did something wrong they cry about it and they get away with it it's just like just shut the hell up man uh 
Born for Hell. This one was all right. Um, kind of a Vietnam veteran comes back, and he's just kind of mentally disturbed after seeing what he saw over there. And he kind of goes and uh, kills, like, all these women. It's based off a true story, actually. Um, if you read the back of that, it'll tell you. Yeah, Richard Speck. So, pretty intense. Um, not terrible, but not great, either. Brain of Blood. This probably has to go down as one of the best, like, covers, in my opinion. I just love the use of the primary colors, and I just think it's gorgeous. Love it. Um, now, this... the where do they say that these are from like philippines uh films but these are a lot of fun i really enjoyed all these films in the franchise and i wanted to pick up the box set because there's a movie in that box set that was only in the box set and you could never buy separately and i can't remember what it was but i really want to uh, watch that one brides of blood uh this is kind of more so uh the same you know if you want to read that there you go sorry i'm a little shaky uh, then we got Kathy's Curse. Now, this is one of their early releases that they released not at the beginning of when they became a company, but it's been out for a long time, as you can see by the blue uh, cases. I really want to pick up, actually, speaking of that, uh, black cases. They sell, Severin sells black cases on their website, and I'd like to kind of pick some up. And as you can kind of see, some of my slipcover versions have blue covers in back there. I think it would look really sleek to have kind of every thing in my collection just had the black cases but kathy's curse was one i held off on to for a long time because i didn't think it looked that good and i kind of thought it was just like a carry ripoff but i really enjoyed this one i had a really good time with kathy's curse cruel jaws <laughs> yeah they marked this as jaws 5 which obviously didn't fly for very long but uh this one was actually pretty not bad pretty not bad um yeah it's just, you know what you're expecting. You know, shark exploitation. A Day of Judgment. This movie is absolutely boring. Absolutely boring. Oh, man. Probably one of the more boring uh, slashers of 1981, which is the primo year to get your slashers, but that one uh, does not have my seal of approval. You could skip that one and probably not miss a single thing at all. Dead Kids, uh, also known as Strange Behavior. This one's all right literally just among the middle of the road if not a little bit under average but uh yeah it's fine deep blood this movie uh it's actually really funny when i was at the stand at a convention i was going through all their movies and uh i asked the guy i was like hey man what's your least favorite movie that you guys have released and he said this one and i was like sweet i'll take it <laughs> um and I enjoyed it. I don't know why. It's a lot of stock footage of sharks in the ocean and a lot of scenes stolen from other movies and just kind of a hodgepodge put together. But for some reason, it just kind of worked for me. And, you know, I don't expect it, my opinion to kind of reflect anybody others, anybody else's opinion because I know a lot of my opinions suck. So, but uh, Deep Blood, I actually had a really great time with that one. Demonia. Uh, another Lucio Fulci film that was a little under par, in my opinion. Um, I did prefer Enigma over Demonio, but, uh, yeah. When you get Lucio Fulci, you kind of tend to hit up some of his other options other than Demonia, if you know what I'm saying. All right, now down here we've got The Devil's Reign. believe this is John Travolta's either first or second appearance on film ever, and that is actually... I thought he was on the back, but... I must be mistaken, unless that's him there. Um, ooey gooey, this movie is so damn good, guys. If This is probably one of my favorite Severn Films releases. And uh, obviously I missed out on the slipcover, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, this movie is literally great. So much fun. A lot going on. Great special effects. Great, like, literally ooey gooey is the best way to kind of describe this movie. Fantastic. I love that movie so much. We've got Escape from Women's Prison. Now, women break out prison movies such as this, Reform School Girls, you know, there's there's so, so many more. Women's Prison Massacre comes to mind. Uh, were never on my radar either. They were just kind of something that I wasn't really the biggest fan of. And I'll, to be honest, a lot of the times they just kind of blend together. It's kind of the same movie, honestly. Um, 
just sleaze and nudity, you know, just for the sake of it, I guess. But uh, this one was okay, actually. This is probably one of the better ones, in my opinion. Well, Reform School Schoolgirls takes the cake. That is the best one I've seen. And actually, also, while I'm mentioning it, I think it's worth mentioning um, another one. Uh, Vendetta was a lot of a lot of fun too. Napoleon Dynamite's aunt or grandma is the bad lady in that movie, which is actually really fun to see. All right, and then let's see, Fourth Victim. Now I kind of expected a typical giallo film here in a giallo. This is not, uh, and it does say in a possibly rare giallo, but. It didn't play necessarily play one out to me. It's just this dude that like he's on his fourth wife, and all the all of them have died mysteriously. Um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. We got Horror Express, and I know Arrow Video released this one, but I I like this edition. I love that cover, so cool. Really enjoyed this one as well. Really, really enjoyed this one as well. I love this movie. It's one of my first uh, Severn Films pickups, if not my first. Actually, that one and uh, Bloody Birthday were among the first in my collection. Now we've got The Horror of Party Beach, another hokey kind of 50s black and white uh, sci-fi. Oh, 1963. Damn, this feels a lot earlier than that. Um, rip off of, obviously, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which Creature from the Black Lagoon was released like in the middle of... I guess it's only like a decade or after that, but still, uh, this movie feels incredibly dated. Uh, there's just, it's, it's very beachy atmosphere. So I would absolutely recommend it if you're kind of looking for films with like black and white beach, like Beach Boys, uh, esque, you know, stuff. But this one was a little lackluster, but liked it enough to keep it in the collection nonetheless. All right. And then next up is Jack the Ripper. Now, this is a 1959 adaptation. This one was a little bit slower, if I'm being honest. And uh, coincidentally, I actually watched this one, like, right after From Hell, uh, which is another Jack the Ripper adaptation. And I absolutely love that movie. So I should have watched this one first uh, before that one because this one's just very tame. You know, uh, if you've seen From Hell, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Next up is Mad Doctor of Blood Island. This is another one in the Blood films. Brain of Blood, Brides of Blood. Uh, more of the same. Cheap, great, goodness. Fantastic covers, too. So good. Next up is Masked Mutilator. Now, this is technically an Intervision label, but uh, it's released by Severn, so I keep it in the Severns. I only have two of these. The next one is actually right up next. Um, you know what to expect with that one. So, all right, then we got Masturbating Gunman. This one is something else, something else. Uh, the last horror convention I went to, my girlfriend and I always have to, I'm always stopping at Severn Table. It's mandatory every time I go to a convention just to see what goodies they've got, and they're great guys. Um, she picked this one out, <laughs> and it is the best thing I probably have ever seen. And I actually picked up a sticker from them. They have a sticker of uh, <clears throat> the guy. And uh, this is truly an experience. Uh, this is unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. Um, if you enjoy... Uh, man, I don't even know what to say. I, I have no idea if you will like this or not. I don't know if you enjoy something else, if you'd like it. But, oh man, that one is an experience. And I love it. And um, I'm extremely happy to have that in my collection. Those are actually, coincidentally, the two uh inner vision titles i have right next to each other next up is next of kin a movie i watched a long time ago right when they first released it and i actually didn't like it and i sold it off um but with a recent sale and kind of a lot of the hype that this movie gets i really wanted to revisit this one and i'm so happy i did because i had a really great time with this movie um yeah always rewatch movies guys Next up is Night Killer. This movie is god-awful. Holy moly. It's like the most rubbery killer of all time, and uh, it's just cheap. I mean, it's from Claudio Fragrasso, so you know what you're getting, but the cover really sold me. Cover got me. Uh, but it's a hokey piece of horror history. Love to 
have stuff like that in my collection, even if I personally didn't like it. Nightmare Castle. Now, this is actually a triple feature um, with Castle of Blood and Ter Terror Creatures from the Grave. These are just uh, kind of, you know, it's kind of your typical gothic uh, movies. Barbara Steele, awesome. Queen of Horror. Next up is No One Heard the Scream. Now, I believe this is made by a lot of the same people from The Cannibal Man. I know it has the same um, lead in it. So, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Had a great time with it. Really liked that story. I, I, it kind of, like, sumptured toward the end. I, it it kind of lost its way a little bit, but I still had a really great time with that movie. Up next is Paganini Horror. Uh, Daria Nicolodi, of course. An Italian uh, scream queen. Really enjoy this one, too. It's, it's very niche. I don't think a lot of people would like this movie, but I really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. Of course, if you want to read about it, there's that if you think it's going to be for you. And actually, interestingly enough, I'm seeing Donald Pleasance was in this, and I don't remember that at all, so that's actually pretty pretty neat. Up next is Patrick. Now, of course, we went over uh, Patrick Still Lives right there. And uh, I enjoyed that movie more than this one. This one is, I believe, like almost two hours long. Nope, only 96 minutes. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. Felt like two hours to me. Um, yeah, this was more so kind of not... A, it was more subdued, but also better storytelling, honestly. But, uh, yeah, that's Patrick there. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls, another one that the cover absolutely sold me on, and it actually ended up being not not very good. Uh, there's some really good, like, scenes and stuff that I had a good time with, but uh, I think this is French, I believe. But, uh, yeah. Robo War. Look at that. An obvious Predator Robocop enter 80s action film here uh ripoff 1988 uh had a lot of fun with this one i mean this is literally just predator with a robot which actually sounds a really really cool but it's not quite as cool as it sounds obviously um and this actually makes a really good double feature Ro uh robo war and then shocking dark is that one by bruno Mattei as well uh yeah, okay, so that makes sense. So both from the same director, Oh, Shocking Dark is more so leaning towards kind of like an alien ripoff, which I actually really enjoy this movie. Uh, yeah, I had a great time with Shocking Dark. <laughs> Skin Deep, another movie that everyone told me was terrible, but I loved. I really, really enjoyed Skin Deep. Uh, it's very not gonna be for a lot of people it's very very uh interesting i'll just kind of say that uh this dude actually ran naked in new york city and got arrested filming a scene for this movie so that's kind of fun but uh yeah i really enjoyed skin deep actually I had a really great time with that movie the strange advice of mrs ward now this one is another giallo movie starring edwig finnick and uh yeah, George Hilton as well, actually. So they're both in both of those. Uh, that one was just okay. I A lot of people I've heard say that that's like one of the best giallos. Uh, and personally, I was found this to be a little bit slower. Uh, but yeah, I need to rewatch it. Next up is The Survivor. Now this is technically kind of... I've heard this being compared to Final Destination. Um, but yeah, I had a good time with this one nonetheless. That's a good one. And then the last in the blood be uh, the blood, brain of blood, brides of blood, Mad Doctor of Blood Island. Uh, this was kind of what started it, I guess. Not really started it, but uh, it's always included with those movies. Is Terror is a Man, and I really enjoyed this one. The creature is really creepy, man. It's a black and white movie. Really good. Love this one. Terror is a Man, I recommend that one. Really good time. This is the Theater Bazaar. Really good anthology movie. There's uh, some really, really good segments in this one, actually. See all the names attached to that, and I'd never really heard anything about this one, so I didn't know what to expect. And I came away having a really good time. Then another uh, anthology movie, The Uncanny, with Peter Cushing, Donald Pleasance, Ray Milland. Uh, this one's great. I love this movie a lot of fun if you want to kind of read about it there uh yeah great great anthology movie 
I believe that's Amicus, but I could be wrong. Uh, Amicus was on fire back in the day. Warriors of the Year... Oh, sorry. Resituating my hand. Warriors of the Year 2072, directed by Lucio Fulch. Lucio. Excuse me, someone yelled at me for saying Lucio before. Uh, kind of a Mad Max ripoff, obviously. Uh, but it's, it's, it's fun nonetheless. It's cheap and it's bad, but it's bad in a good way. And I realize that that is, aligns with my taste. Next is Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. This movie's not good. I was very, very bored by this movie. And it's, it is German. It's, uh, German speaking, so. And, uh, yeah, I expect a lot of more, like, kind of like Werewolf Mayhem. Uh, and this is, isn't that. I was also probably just not paying too much attention to it, so another one that I need to revisit. Next up is Wild Beasts, another good kind of killer animal movie. I haven't seen this one in a long time, though. It was another one of the first uh, Severn films I, I picked up. All right, then we got Zombie Holocaust. I believe this is also known as Dr. Butcher, MD. Uh, yeah, just more cannibal goodness. This is a really good one, though. I really, really enjoyed that movie. And then we'll finish off the collection with a little zombie two-pack here. We've got Zombie 3 from Lucio Fulci. Lucio, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, no, this one, it's... These movies are... If you liked the original Zombie by Lucio, Lucio Fulci... And no, I'm not talking about Dawn of the Dead. I'm talking about Lu, Lucio Fulci's Dawn of the... Or, not Dawn of the Dead. His... He released a movie called Zombie, and a lot of places called it Zombie 2 because they considered Dawn of the Dead Zombie 1. And so this is kind of carrying on. So technically, this is only the second zombie movie from Lucio Fulci. Uh, but very cheap. But, you know, it, you just kind of go into these movies for the special effects and kind of the fun and the hokiness of it. And if you kind of go into it with that filter, then I think you'd have a good time. I know a lot of people absolutely despise these movies, and this is actually from Claudio Fergasso as well, who did Night Killer. Oof. Uh, but, so this one is obviously not quite as good, and that creature actually looks like from Demon. Demons, excuse me, but, yeah. Zombie 4. It's alright. So there's the Severin Films collection. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Always love picking up some Severn Films movies. You never know what you're going to get, ever. Um, check me out on Instagram, at SlasherCaptain, where I post Slasher Film reviews, as well as other fun pictures of my collection. Also check me out on Letterboxd, where I post everything I watch, along with a five-star rating. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys this week. See you.